For anyone who doesn't know me, I am Chantel Hernandez and I'm the Community Music Center Program Coordinator and I am excited to be here with you all tonight. This is our very final CMC session. Um, at, hopefully there will be more to come. But I want to thank Trevor Otten, CMC Cultural Traditions Department Faculty Chair, uh, and for his coordination of the artist workshops in this series and our special guest, Allison Lovejoy. Hi, Allison. Hello. Thank you so much, Chantel. And thanks, Traeger, for inviting me to be a part of this. He's always full of good ideas. And, um, and for Sylvia, also, for coordinating. Um, I just want to say, give a greeting to everyone, and, and thank you for joining in tonight. Um, this is really a pleasure and an honor to be able to talk about my musical career and my teaching and about the wonderful Community Music Center of San Francisco. I just received an award last year for teaching there 25 years. It's a home to many of us and it's a center of, of community, of connection. Um, it's incredibly diverse, it's incredibly open and there is music coming out of every window and door and people there come not just for the music but for the community so i can't say enough great things about it and and thank steve shapiro for hiring me and and julie steinberg for all of her great work currently and and my wonderful colleagues and and faculty and students um now if you don't know about it please do check it out um i started teaching there 25 years ago and at that time i'm gonna just give you an idea of what I was doing. I was uh, out of the Conservatory of Music, living in San Francisco, loving going out to hear jazz and occasionally, you know, going, giving concerts, going to the symphony. But I was really trying to make my way into the musical world. And um, I had envisioned and, and performed classical, a classical career, prepared myself to do competitions and went to do my master's degree at the conservatory, studied in Europe. But what really connected me to the school um, was, uh, was something that I, I'd never really revealed, is that I came from a, a background where I did not have a, a much support for my music since I was a, um, when I was a teenager. As a young girl, I had family who did. But I came uh, to California and I was without a piano. I was on my own at 16. And if it weren't for scholarships and, and, and guide, guidance from great teachers or people supporting music, I might not have been able to have all these opportunities. So the Community Music Center not only gives faculty opportunities to play together and connect, but students who can receive scholarship and have an opportunity to perform and learn uh, from many different genres. Which goes to my uh, musical world. I I am at heart a classical pianist and by training, but I think more than anything, I would say I'm a musician before I would say pianist, a composer, someone who loves all music and loves the story behind music. The connections that I make with people are unlike any of those you would make without playing an instrument. And um, the connections that are across culture, language, borders, have been in really incredible. I'm so grateful for these. And I'm gonna talk through some of the excerpts that I have for you and talk about those connections. And, and, and I hope that you listening to this talk at whatever level you play music or, um, or listen to music that you um, can become closer to that as well. And I'm in New Orleans right now, um, although I've been living in San Francisco and teaching there and playing there. And right here, I'm at the center of a musical life in America and the birthplace of jazz. And it's really incredible to be in a place where I was playing the other day, playing the music of Jelly Roll Morton, um, who lived and thrived here, who claims to have invented jazz and um, to play with wonderful musicians, our host Stu Odom, a bassist, who also played with me in San Francisco in my cabarets. And I toured with his band in Europe and Japan. So it's just a perfect situation and scenario. And I'm gonna play um, some original music based on ragtime in a little bit. 
Um, but first, I want to highlight how it is interesting that a classical musician could become so interested uh, and develop musically in other styles. And, and it's, it's no accident um, that I have. I, I wouldn't call myself an expert jazz pianist, but I do play a lot of uh, music of jazz composers and I'm still learning. I'm still teaching. My students are teaching me. My colleagues are teaching me. In this world, I always find that it's uh, un unending and it's always exciting. But playing classical music is exciting too. And I learned most of Beethoven's concerti. I've played with several orchestras. I play a lot of romantic impressionist music. And I always um, enjoy this as sort of a, um, what I would say is my, my um, spiritual life as a musician. And I practice as, um, as much as I possibly could. And, and, and um, I can't say that I practice as much as I used to. Um, but this is one excerpt of one of my great memories of playing before the pandemic in a fall 2018, I believe. I played the Beethoven Fifth Concerto at Herbst Theater with my great friend and colleague who I met at Community Music Center, uh, Maestro um, Or Steiner and the Golden Gate Symphony. Chantel, can we listen to a little bit of the Beethoven Five from 2018? Yes. And while Chantel's setting that up, I just wanted to let people know that uh, if you have any questions or anything, we do have a question and answer session at the end. If anybody has any questions, sorry to interrupt, Allison. Um, uh, you're welcome to put them into chat or write them down and ask them later. But I'm going to be watching the chat. And if it's a question I can answer, I will. If it's a question specifically for Allison, let me know. And uh, anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. I've worked with Allison. We both worked at the center for 20 plus years and so much looking forward to Allison to hearing what you got to say. It's yeah. So All right. how does that look, Allison? Great. Thank you. All right. Now, um, when I perform uh, a lot of these pieces, I study a lot of the history and the context of the composition. And one thing that um, many people know about this piece is that Beethoven wrote it when he was deaf. And um, I find that the, the, the context and the um, cultural background for classical compositions always brings us closer to the music. And I had played the fourth concerto and this concerto as well with Oris and his orchestra in Nicaragua. And just a short story about our um, travels in, um, in Europe and in, a, in Nicaragua. He set up a festival where he invited um, the children from the, all the different barrios around Managua to sing in a choir in the concert hall in Carmina Burana. And I played a concerto and, and we had um, an incredible mixture of people from different different countries and different orchestras come together. And, and Orison, uh, many of my other colleagues and friends inspired me to 
pr pursue playing classical music in ways that, um, that, that may be different and unconventional, but that also invite uh, um, more audience and that create a sort of connection that's beyond the concert hall situation. So as much as I love to play with an orchestra in a beautiful Steinway in a concert hall, I also find that um, that uh, playing outside at festivals and and playing with people uh, in in unconventional places, as you'll see, um, brings classical music in into a different light. And um, I, I found that to be part of my goal. How can I reach people? How can I communicate? How can I bring people together and create connections? And um, on that on the connections note. I would like to talk about another classical project I did that turned into a multi-genre project. And um, it's called The Nocturnes for Piano. It started out with some beautiful Chopin and Debussy, and I set up piece concerts, um, actually through a grant from the Community Music Center. And The Nocturnes being these beautiful, romantic, or emotional pieces that are full of color and emotion, seemed to call for um, a new project, which I called the New Nocturnes for Piano. So I invited and commissioned our, um, my fellow uh, brilliant colleagues, Chus Alonzo and Marcus Shelby, um, who is not yet CMC faculty, to write pieces for me for this uh, collaboration, I would say, of composer and pianist. Um, many, many musicians from around the world, uh, local composer Kirk Meacham and, um, and also um, Dino Saluzzi from Argentina. But I would like to really um, give a shout out to our talented CMC faculty. I uh, played with Traeger Auden and have learned so much working with him and had so much fun. I've had the great opportunity to play and work with Chus Alonso and his flamenco, um, flamenco group. And I've also worked with Beth Wilmer of the Children's Chorus, as you'll see later, with Dave Scott, formal faculty, Dan Fabricant, bass player, and many of our piano faculty, vocal faculty, Ellen glick Barche, just so many talented people. So thank you for opening up to me. And um, also Michael Knapp and, and Richard I, um, um sending you a a big love um, from the other side. Um, anyway, here we go to a com um, compilation I did of new nocturnes. This is a piece called the Nocturno de la Ventana and Chus based it on a, a, a Lorca poem, a beautiful poem um, from his Nocturnos and, and made a musical composition out of it. You can hear the flamenco infused with a sort of a classical composition in this piano piece. Um, are you ready, Chantal? I am. <laughs> Uh, this album uh, is available on Apple Music and from me. Um, I think it's also on, on many digital uh, formats and Amazon and all of that. Um, it was really wonderful to, um, to have a piece that was composed for me. And uh, Marcus's 
piece is also beautiful and I hope to keep playing them and keeping them in my repertoire. And also I've written some nocturnes and um, would uh, will eventually publish those. Um, and so I've been writing classical music and I've been playing a lot of classical music, but many of you know that I also write songs, art songs and, and mainly cabaret and theater songs. And um, in our, uh, in the some uh, upcoming excerpts, I'm going to play some of that for you. But first, I'd like to talk about the really great organization I've been involved with uh, that has brought a lot of music from different genres and many pianists out into the Golden Gate Park with 12 pianos and has created a whole new thriving outdoor concert scene that's free, open to the public. And, and completely um, uh, diverse and, and wonderful and magical. It's called Sunset Piano, the organization, and um, Dean Mermel, my dear friend and filmmaker and pianist, and Mauro Fortissimo, pianist, artist, and, and great friend of mine, started putting pianos out on the coastline of uh, San Mateo Coast, Half Moon Bay. And Mauro said, well, they might throw the piano away, but I'll take it out and play for the whales people started coming and we would show up and we would all play some concerts and then people started filming it. Dean was filming it. And then 12 pianos were placed upon the coast and all of these different scenes led to happenings. And this led to the making of a, a film called 12 Pianos um, featuring Mara Fortissimo and Dean Mermel. And, um, I did, yes, we love Mauro, right? Um, it ended up turning into Flower Piano, or one, one facet of the organization is Flower Piano, which is a festival that happens yearly, and again next year at the Golden Gate Park Botanical Gardens. I am the musical, I am the musical supervisor for the film, and I did some of the soundtrack. You'll see a little excerpt of me in the trailer at the end, playing on Montara, beach, the coastline, and whales are really diving up and down as I'm playing Debussy. So can we watch this trailer for the 12 Pianos film? Uh, Chantal, please. Yes, I got it right here. calls for free pianos all the time and well nothing is really free you know I mean yeah they give you the piano but the soccer weighs 800 pounds show a while back and I was burning a piano some people got upset and they asked me hey why don't you donate that to a school well the school's the one piano they just got 10 out of Oakland we're going to install 12 pianos at select locations along the San Mateo coast I mean look at here do I love to just have this view and play <laughs> What we're doing might not be strictly legal, but sometimes we have to do something a little crazy. So we were thinking that maybe the ghosts of the previous piano owners are here. So it wasn't like, like a big conceptual thing. Out of breath, at a vis new temple with a bell out of order, please knock sign. Bright angel, fan out of the wizards, ante rooms, green in the sun. As though a city could be washed in wax like a Mercedes. I'm trying to look a bit into the futures and see, well, Hopefully I will not be around, but there'll be a day in which there are no, there are no more pianos, when there'll be no more pianos around. Thank you. Yeah. Um, at the end of the film, there's a scene in which we take a piano out, um, an open piano out on a fishing boat. And um, there, are, there were whales there. We sat 
we didn't um, go out and interfere with them. They came to us as Mara was playing and there are whales breaching on each side of the boat. And I thought to myself, if I weren't open and if I weren't um, resonating with different musicians and, and learning from them or um, uh, participating in these things, I would never have these experiences. And this goes to our, our cultural um, life at the Music Center and San Francisco. Um, I think there's a type of openness that I really savor and that, that I think I, I flourish in this environment. But um, that constant learning, that um, being open to performing in unusual places and, and removing ego or expectations from situations. Even when a piano is maybe not the best or the weather's kind of cold, you know you're having this great experience and, and playing with birds and flying around and, and flowers and people who are engaged. And this is a really seen and heard at Flower Piano. And the next clip is uh, really interesting. It's uh, I curated several concerts at Flower Piano and, and have every year. And um, one of the yearly events I do is in conjunction with classical revolution uh, musicians. Hi, Cherith. Um, and this one is also, uh, uh, it's called the Carnival of the Animals by Saint-Saëns. And um, what we do is we, um, I, I curate, I collect uh, musicians and, and we rehearse together with a puppeteer who makes her own puppets, Nikki Ulela, who's a genius. And we actually have an animated performance of the, of the uh, Carnival of the Animals by Saint-Saëns every year. In addition, the awesome orchestra comes and plays and sometimes they play a concerto with them. Other people, like our colleague at CMC, Eric Walker, may be playing jazz and originals on the other side of the park of the Arboretum. Well, someone like Chuchito Valdez is doing a feature concert. It's unbelievable. It's such a wonderful festival. Uh, here's an example of one scene, and there are a lot of children, but I hope you enjoy this clip of um, a flower piano, um, which I believe was from 2016. Many stages of wonderful music that are occurring at this moment. Um, I would like to introduce my duo pianist, Kimri, Kimri Asenko, who is around here somewhere. Oh, there he is. We're going to be playing the Carnival of the Animals with members of the Classical Revolution and Beth Custer. <laughs> Nikki and Rina are going to be doing her amazing, amazing puppets. Would you? Do you have a name um, for the puppet? Just fast forward to where the music starts, Chantel. Just maybe oh, about yeah. 10 seconds. Because I'm talking minutes. too much. Yeah. Let's see. Well, was that 10 minutes or 10 seconds? 10 seconds. 10 seconds, yeah. 10 seconds Chantel. 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You'll see I'm sitting down.
that is the Roaring Lion, the uh, introduction of the Royal March of the Lion. And you can see that's a fearsome creature right there. <laughs> um, this is a, a really great example of collaboration. And, you know, um, Kim Ria Sanko is a pianist that was uh, my duet partner. And we both play, he's the principal pianist in the Santa Rosa Symphony. And it was through that collaboration we started doing some duo music. And, um, and then, of course, we have a, a wonderful orchestra of musicians in that. So before I go on to composition, I want to talk a little bit about the piano and my love for Chopin. I'm going to play you a short excerpt on a piano that has endured some New Orleans weather and has been around for a while. And um, I love working with students who, who play everything, of course. And at, at CMC, I've had the, uh, a range of students uh, who are from different, different cultures, backgrounds, and ages, and, and ability levels. And it's really, some, it's really something that even my early students want to learn to play Chopin as soon as possible. There's something universally um, incredible about him. And if you really think about it, Chopin was in, in essence, uh, you know, one of the great pianists, of course, in history and composers. But he was a folklorist, like so many of the composers I like. He inspired a lot of his works from folk dances and mazurkas and polonaises. And he also inspired a lot, a lot of his work was inspired by opera. And this piece too is called the Barcarolle. I'm going to play an abbreviated version of it. And he took uh, some of the influence and the stylings of a bel canto opera singer and, and made that, um, the, um, gave that quality to the right hand. And so when I talk to my students about the music, I talk about what we should sound like and why the music is written that way. Not just how to play it right, but I try to understand the essence of it, the character. And, and um, I'm always looking for that when I play. So I hope you do enjoy this Barcarolle in F-sharp minor. Um, the A section uh, by Frederick Chopin.
Now the next piece I'm going to play for you is something completely different. Um, uh, as I continued to play and, and record classical music um, and, and commissions by new composers, Michael Walsh and music of Arne Oldberg, I'm, I'm happy to always be playing music of, of composers who are alive or less recognized, who are friends or, or colleagues. And I'm also happy to be playing Chopin and Rachmaninoff and Bach. Um, it's all um, really enjoyable, but I, I do especially love writing and I like writing lyrics and stories. I am a natural storyteller and I've always been connected to literature and theater. So I got asked to um, direct a children's theater group and be musical director for several theaters around the Bay Area. And I worked with a, a group of children at Young Performers Theater that um, asked me, me to uh, have one of my works produced. And it was a, a children's musical called Trouble in Trollville. Naturally, it was a, a bit politically leaning, politically left, and the kids got that. Um, and, and were great to work with. And uh, this song is called Paint Me a Dream. And um, they, it's really about creating, painting, and imagining a better future. And the CMC, the Community Music Center Children's Chorus, led by wonderful friend and director Beth Wilmer, it had performed it in one of their children's choir concerts. Now this group is so delightful, and I think that they even did a little bit of choreography and uh, she's done such wonderful work with them and our adult choirs. I just thought I would share this piece called Paint Me a Dream and by the San Francisco Community Music Center Children's Chorus. <laughs> adorable aren't they and a, uh, a kazoo choir uh, that might be the first time I've uh, ever heard one anyway um, wonderful directing by Beth um, and I love hearing the children's choir rehearsing while I'm upstairs teaching at the music center I'm looking forward to us opening up again you can hear a Latin percussion and um, the teen jazz band and uh, violins and trombone long tones and pianists and singers all day long um, at least on Mondays when I'm there and Tuesdays. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit more of my cabaret work. Now I will um, not necessarily uh, be able to perform any of my cabaret songs for you live, but I'll have you know that I have this uh, persona and I, I created a genre I would say, we call, I call it Cabaret Nouveau. So it mixes uh, different styles of Kurt Weill, musical theater, um, jazz and blues, funk, uh, whatever the song requires, ragtime, um, and I tell stories, usually true stories, um, or social commentary about women from San Francisco, about um, concepts, and, and I create, um, sometimes I create plays and shows. One is called The Seven Deadly Pleasures. I co-created it with Jeff Ball, 
and it has had several manifestations, including one at a ACT's costume shop. And The Seven Deadly Pleasures is about the modern um, American sins, and, um, and this is an excerpt from our performance at Herbst Theater with the wonderful uh, Maestro Steiner conducting. And this is from the orchestral suite of The Seven Deadly Pleasures. Metti Tossen sings the part of the devil, and he is mourning his loneliness. He's called the, it's called the most favored angel. This is Herbst Theater uh, 2019. Greg, Greg Stevens orchestrated this for me, uh, my composition. wonderful singer, uh, Mette Tassin, um, did a superb job playing, um, singing the part of the devil, a sympathy for the devil sort of um, aria. And uh, we did record a cast album of that show, and I hope to produce again, The Seven Deadly Pleasures. Um, but right now I'm working on uh, the finishing touches to a few songs from a new show. And once again, collaborations that started at the Community Music Center. Or Steiner, the conductor of that orchestra we just saw, was the director and creator of our um, Community Music Center Orchestra. And my co-creator and, and dear friend and, and wonderful composer, Candice Forrest, was the previous director of the Children's Chorus. We met in the copy room at the Community Music Center and we became fast friends and are collaborating on a new show about great women of San Francisco with our writing partners, um, with our uh, creative partners, um, Beth Wilmer, Lua Hadar, and Natalie Green. Um, this show features many pieces about great heroines and madams, musicians and charlatans, um, the bold and the body and the beautiful. Um, I just finished a recording of a piece about Mary Ellen Pleasant with the great Tiffany Austin and Tammy Hall. And we have a website called The Best Bad Things SF and on this website, we have a few excerpts of songs from this show. I hope that we produce it in person next year. We're looking forward to it, but um, I definitely think that um, a show about great women, written by women, cast with an all women, um, all women performers and musicians will be really uh, a timely and uh, very, very, very fun and also important 
uh, subject matter for our times. So the best bet things, this is the opening song, and the quote comes from an author who describes San Francisco as being a place where one could find the best bad things. <laughs> Chantal? Please welcome, with the best bad things, the Wild Women! <laughs> several pieces that we've also made videos of that are available on YouTube and one I recently um, created with uh, Beth Wilmert singing is about Dorothea Lange who I hadn't realized lived here and as a, a woman who's been working as an artist in San Francisco um, and also um, very interested in, in the history of the city I found it to be wonderful to write a piece about her and uh, about so many of these great women. Um, so I, ho I hope we have a chance to share more of that with you. Um, on that note, I'm going to change it up a bit. Um, there was a time when I played rock and roll uh, with several groups, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, um, and also uh, Stu Odom and the Graves Brothers Deluxe. And um, I was always interested in collaborating with people, playing keyboards and playing accordion. Um, on Stu Ham's recordings or on, um, whenever asked uh, to have a chance to learn from other musicians. And one great opportunity or one great friendship that came about on my tour with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra was meeting a uh, producer and um, just great human being, Jack Douglas in New York. He's uh, known for his uh, production of recordings of Aerosmith and also for John Lennon's Imagine. And, um, he invited me on the summer of 2019 to come down to LA at Union Studios and play on uh, Ringo Starr's uh, most recent album, to play accordion on a song that John Lennon wrote and they never recorded. And it was beautiful uh, to meet him and to laugh with him. It was funny and delightful. And it was also very, very touching and profound to listen to him in my headphones as I was recording, gently whisper at the end of the song that, we're, um, that we recorded called Grow Old With Me, uh, to hear Ringo whisper, I love you, John. Uh, and I thank Jack for that great opportunity and, and many others um, for helping me record the Seven Deadly Pleasures album, but really just a, a wonderful experience and a big surprise to me. And here's a picture of the session from with Jack Douglas and uh, some of the other on uh, the recording engineer. Uh, I think it's right there. Ringo is not in this picture. I couldn't find that one. Oh, and Daniel Coe, our arranger and the engineer. And um, so people don't believe me when I tell them, but it's true. <laughs> anyway, um, that was one of the things that came about from being open, um, from from being open to possibilities. And another great opportunity that came up for being open to possibilities and also from my love for um, um, uh, different music from different cultures, especially um, music of, of, of um, uh, I love Urdu music and Indian music as, and also Iranian and Persian classical music. Uh, I was asked to tour with uh, the great Homayun Shaharian and Saurabh Pornazeri. 
And here is an excerpt of us playing in London. Again, all of these great things happened in 2019 before we went into lockdown. And I was really glad to have this opportunity to tour the States and Europe with this wonderful group of musicians. His, uh, they are probably the most revered musicians in Iran uh, at this time, at least living ones. And his, um, this is a very beautiful song from uh, Westminster Hall in London, 2019. Absolutely wonderful music. Um, on the, uh, and my next song, I'm going to play a song called The Ragdog Blues, because I'm here in New Orleans and I feel like I should play something based on ragtime. I want to give a big shout out to all of the people who have taught me and uh, my teachers, including Jesse Foster and Mark Little, who are faculty at the Community Music Center, and, and to all my great piano teachers and, and to the great supportive um, staff of, of the Community Music Center. Um, Sylvia Sherman and all the people who've worked there, Chantel and, um, and, and Stephen Shapiro, of course, and, and just our, our, our great community. Also, my, my, one of my greatest friends, uh, Momos, and I want to thank you for all of your, your love and support because it's not so easy to, um, to do all of these things. So it's really great to have that friendship and also with from Candice, too, or just really appreciate the people who come to the concerts and listen and I want to play for you what I think is one of um, one of my better songs and also um, something that really speaks to our times it's a, called the ragdog blues and and um, um, I love how Angela Flom sings this but I'm going to sing for you a song about the 99% or about um, making it through hard times and, and, and feeling down but getting up anyway. And it's called The Rag Dog Blues and it's featured in the film Dogmatique. <laughs>
So uh, I'm uh, running a little short on time. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I want to play one more excerpt for you from um, a great collaboration uh, uh, I, I was invited to perform on recently. And um, this year has been interesting because I've been practicing more and composing more. And I'm looking forward to seeing my students again and all, all my colleagues and playing together with you, Traeger, and um, having our conversations in the courtyard. But I am so happy that, um, that I have I had the opportunity to meet um, so many wonderful writers in this city. And um, in this tribute to Lawrence Ferlinghetti, which was hosted by the San Francisco Chronicle and my, Michael Gray, I was recommended by the uh, wonderful treasured author Gary Camilla to perform some compositions in, in, and art songs in this, uh, in this uh, tribute. I've been writing more art songs and setting poetry. Jack Hirschman, great poet and, uh, and of San Francisco, a uh, previous San Francisco poet laureate and good friend and dear human being, wrote a poem which I set to music. And then he asked me to set a Lawrence Ferlinghetti poem to music. So here's my last clip from the Ferlinghetti tribute that we did last month. Constantly risking absurdity and death whenever he performs above the heads of the audience. The poet, like an acrobat, climbs on his own ride on a high wire of his own making. Above the sea of faces, paces his way to the other side of day, performing ultra shots and sleight of foot tricks and other high theatrics, and all without mistaking anything for what it may not be. Thank you, Chantal. Um, Sorry, one second. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so it was really, uh, really an honor to be a part of that and, and knowing City Lights and, and being a great fan of, of Lawrence and, um, and just so grateful to have this great, this culture in our city and to be collaborating with people like Gary um, and with, you know, with Jack and, and to, to be able to say that this is our city, it's, it's just really something that uh, has kept me here and, is, and, and, I, and the Community Music Center, they've been um, really mainstays of my, my musical life, flower piano as well. And I, I just can't thank you all enough for coming in and listening today. I know we're going to open it up to some questions, um, so I'm happy to answer. And if I can, and I just wanted to say one thing, I teach all of my students the blues. No matter what they play, I teach them all how to improvise and I encourage them to compose. And I, I, I really think that at the Community Music Center, we have some of the most diverse and broad ranging um, lessons and teachers in, in anywhere I've seen. And, and I think that's really the heart of music. That's what's, um, what keeps us together. So, um, any questions, please? I'd, I'd love to answer. There was a question in the chat. Um, what is an art song? What is an art song? Um, it's usually a classical piece based on poetry that already exists, you know, from, uh, uh, in the classical world, uh, composers like Schubert and Schumann wrote art songs, Debussy also. So they're meant for a, a classical um, audience, um, but they're not operatic because they're not performed in, the, in um, theaters or stage. 
And, and by the way, I teach music history also, and I have taught at the Academy of Art, and I love doing concerts where I tell stories about the music. So it's, it's really, uh, to me, like actually one of the most fun parts of learning about music. So ask me anything. I might not know, but <laughs> I can look it up. Also, someone is also asking about the Bull Bad Woman uh, to get that link to that site. Um, that is the best bad things SF dot com all one word the best bad things sf yeah we have quite a few excerpts up there and i'm going to be um premiering a new video on uh the song about mary ellen pleasant soon and we'll update you about, about our opening of our show and i had a question allison um yes. what what do you have planned like for you know we're coming out of covid we nobody's none of us have gigged for a year we're starting to come out of our shells and stuff. Do you have anything planned for like, like, what do you do? What do you, I'm just interested to hear what other musicians are doing. Um, one, one thing is this show, the best bad thing, starting to get it ready for a staged production, a modular theater piece. Another is playing more with, with my musical colleagues like you getting out there and, and bringing out my accordion and piano and, and, and then, uh, composing a secular, an oratorio, combining secular and classical music. Um, Gary Camilla has, uh, has kindly and generously offered to uh, partner with me as a librettist. And this is a piece about Elijah Lovejoy, one of my ancestors. Um, and he was uh, both abolitionist and, uh, and a writer who fought for freedom of the press. And his, um, his, uh, he worked as an editor and started his own abolitionist newspaper and the uh, SF, um, uh, the Golden Gate Symphony and Chorus will be performing that in one year. So oh. I got to get to writing. <laughs> right. That sounds like you got some work. <laughs> yeah. Choir, orchestra and, vo and vocalists. I'm really excited about it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Allison. It was so great to hear your story and all of the connections that you've made. And um, and just to hear, it kind of tied everything back to CMC, how, how tight and wonderful this community is. And that brings us to the end of our CMC sessions. Um, Trigger, do you want to say anything? Well, I wish I could say come back in two weeks because uh, we're going to have some more great uh the presentations like the one we just heard uh i i was so happy like i was i was just i i had high expectations but all of the presentations far exceeded my expectations so I, i'm planning on doing another one next year or i'll give it maybe i'll do one next year but i just wanted to give the faculty a chance and um well, that's thank you, Trigger, for doing well, thank that. You, thank Allison. you so much. Yeah. yeah. And, no, please, and, and, um, let me just mention my website if people want to reach me. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's www.allisonlovejoy.com. And um, I, I would hope to hear from you at some point. Yeah, I've just been so, I mean, I know that we have good faculty and that uh, they're working musicians. And, you know, there's there's a thing amongst musicians it's like well if you can't play then you teach or something but that's not true um especially at community music center because we have so many like wonderful performers that are actually teachers and um that with and i'm the chair of the cultural traditions department which means i deal with like i try to help facilitate things and get us together the folks that play non-classical music i love classical music don't get me wrong but uh <laughs> the folks that play non-classical music and that's what we do and it was so great to hear you know allison miguel govea all the people i think a lot of you came to a lot of them so i want to also thank you for coming to these presentations and we're probably going to keep going you know it's, it's kind of Okay, we're all stuck at Zoom, but it's kind of nice not to have to go and find parking and stuff and have a <laughs> presentation. There's something to that, actually. Yes. So uh, we, we we gotta look at we gotta look at the the glasses half full, uh, with the whole yes. COVID year that we've been through, and, and we're, we're very lucky to have. What's that? We're very lucky to have had the lessons throughout CMC. 
was outstanding at, at, at responding and setting up lessons online immediately. It was remarkable. Yeah, handled well, it beautifully and, and many students stay. Yeah, the, most, uh, in fact, I've been working as much as normal. And, you know, the administration came up, stepped up to the plate, the teachers and also the students, most important, stepped up to the plate and, you know, people have been learning. It's, it's actually not been a bad year. <laughs> uh, Chantel, do you want to say anything else? I think that's it. Thank you, Songbird. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thanks, Thank Alex. You, and have a great time in New Orleans. I'm so jealous. I wish oh. I was there too. <laughs> Me too. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.